Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 Ravenport with me, Mr. Sealy P. I have just completed the delivery of a cup of a pallet um, of water from the was it the coffee shop, wasn't it? Um, up here to the front of the ranch area. Um, I recorded all of that and then deleted the recording by accident because that's Mr. Sealy P. That's what he does. Um, right, so I'm going to head down to the field I bought. Let's have a look, see what land we own. Now, th what I have noticed on FS19 is the array of different animal and wild, uh, wildlife. And there's something that keeps squeaking. Someone left me a comment saying, what is that beeping sound you keep, I keep, keep hearing? I think it's that. I'm not sure what kind of creature it is, but every now and again it's like someone stepping on a mouse. Um, it's very peculiar. Um, I'm going to head down to the field now, but I was looking on the map and on the route I'm going to take down. I think I saw this on one of the streams. I can't remember if it's Simulate or Virtual Farmer. I'm in Virtual Farmer. And he pointed this out, like this monastery church thing. This is why I also thought this this map was sort of set more down San Diego, kind of way closer towards the, the border type thing, simply because the architecture seemed kind of... Mexican type, you know, I don't know whether that's just me, I, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, the detail to the, this building site, and I'm assuming if you do contracts, you might well get a job that's got to bring you up here for some reason, but it's incredible. It really is incredible, the detail that's gone into this. And it's the kind of thing that, if they hadn't have done it, you wouldn't even know. I mean, look at this. Wow, that's amazing. Just... I mean, it's beautiful. It's it's an it's an incredible thing to behold. But unless you came up here for any particular reason, you wouldn't even know it was here. Wow, really cool. Now, let's head down to this field, shall we, and see what we've got. Um, I just want to say uh, a huge, huge thank you to everyone, and I really do mean everyone. When I put up my video, my first video, and I was sort of complaining, you know, I suppose it was a complaint, I don't know. Um, everyone has been so, so nice. I, I really, really do appreciate it massively. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports my channel and supports me. And, you know, it is hugely, hugely appreciated. I've had so many comments left by people saying they've been watching for a long, long time but have never commented. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I really do appreciate that. Long time viewer, first time commenter. That's always nice. Um, and it's just been, yeah, it's like... I apologise. That squeaking is not in-game. That's not a new feature. It's not the trailer hitch or anything like that. That's my daughter's. My oldest daughter's decided she's going to make a Christmas pudding for Christmas. She's never done it before. Um, and she's decided she's going to go and get all the ingredients, make a Christmas pudding. She ordered a little Christmas pudding steamer the other day, which came, which is wonderful. So there's been a lot of clattering and banging coming from the kitchen, and now she's decided she needs to go to buy a load more ingredients. So that was the front door squeaking. And what makes me laugh is whenever I'm recording, and people come in and they're not sure if I'm recording, or I am recording and I'm talking and they make a noise, they then apologise out loud which actually then ends up making more noise than the noise they made in the first place. So, you know, kids. Can't live with them. Apparently you can't bury them in the garden. That's not the done thing. Ugh. So. Here we are. This is field 19. Now, I made a minor error the other day, and I did say if you start on New Farmer, you start with all this plot of land and you start with a few fields here. And I said you start with, I thought you started with, because these are two separate plots. If I do L3, got this plot here, <clears throat> there, and I assumed that you only started with this plot. But apparently when you start a new farmer, you start with both. So you do actually start with field 24, 25, 26 and 19 if you start on new farmer. So that was my error, I do apologise. Uh, we have potatoes in here, and according to the field info, this is fully fertilised. So this is not going to need anything other than potentially weeding. 
Um, which brings me on to something else that was suggested. Um, and if it was you that suggested it, thank you so much. I still, I've got to get into the habit of when I'm going through my comments. And the thing is now, and this is why I said right from the word go, when I started doing videos, I will always endeavour to either like or comment <clears throat> on every single comment that's made. And I read every single comment. I actually read absolutely every single comment on every single video. Um, what I need to get into the habit of doing now, because I'm getting so many more comments on my videos, which is fantastic. I love the fact people are watching, they're responding, they're giving me advice, feedback. Even if it's just telling me what they're up to at the moment on their particular uh, map. Um, I see a comment and think, oh, that's an interesting bit of information. But I remember the information, but what I need to start doing is writing down the name of the person who commented and left that bit of information so they can get a shout out. I've always said that before, I don't do shout outs randomly, um, but I will shout out for people that have helped me out, given me advice or told me something that I didn't know or, you know, there are a lot of people that are commenting and telling me things that I already know, but you're not, you're not to know that, you don't know whether I know it or not, so, you know, that's the whole point, isn't it? So the advice was this, it was about buying some kind of fertilizer spreader sprayer or something like that so if you do get a fertilizing contract you haven't got to then lease the equipment you can do it yourself plus it also means if i get any weeds come through here so i'm thinking a sprayer that way i can fertilize on fertilizing contracts i suppose the flip side of that is i'm putting wear and tear on my equipment rather than someone else's if i lease but then i shouldn't lose too much money but then the offset of that is, and this is what you have to start thinking about now, playing on FS19, it's far more complicated than FS17 was. Um, there's the cost implication, and how long it's going to take you to recover that money, and then the wear and tear on the vehicle. Are you just better off leasing until you've built up money? Um, it's, it's a dilemma. Um, so I was thinking, if I go to crop protection, and just the delta, I mean, that's 30 grand, isn't it? Um, I do want to use that, actually, because obviously the delta was in the Coon Pack on FS17. I want to try and use some different machinery. That's got 24 metre spread, and it's 2,200 litres. That front tank, the Coon FP, uh, PF1500, was in FS17. But that will increase that tank capacity out to 3,700. So that will be... That combination would be quite good, but it's not going to be cheap. So what I think I might do, for the time being, carry on plodding away and doing my contracts, as I am. Um, and then if I get some weeds come through, do it. If I get a fertilising job, then maybe buy it and just take it, take a bit of a hit on it. Um, I also had someone send me a picture, and it was absolutely awesome. Um, rather than buy a tractor, which was quite expensive, they had a pickup truck um, with... What trailer was it on the back? It might have been one of the ones for the cotton bales, you know. I think it was... Uh, where's the cotton technology? Is it just under trails? trailers? Baling? That's the problem. There's so many <laughs> so many different things now. Oh, what was it under? Was it under baling technology? No. It might just be under trailers. I just, so, just trying to find all these things in the menus now. Isn't it? I've probably gone past the cotton thing, haven't I? Cotton technology, there we go, look. Yeah, I'm sure it was the Module 4. Because you can put the back down, and they had a skid steer loader on the back with pallet forks. So that combination then gave them the option to be able to transport all around the map, load and unload. I liked that. That was It's one of those things you stop and think, I wish I'd have thought of that. That would be really cool. I kind of went for the bog standard, you know tractor trailer combo anyway it's a nice tractor but you know <laughs> so there's our field we've got a little bit of flat land here so we might be able to play some that's like flat you know sort of flat waiting for that tent mod waiting for any mods you know mr controversial as usual you know um i'm gonna just chuck this out there is it just me? And I don't know if I've mentioned this already, so I'm in that mode again now where I think things in my head, and sometimes I think, oh, I really shouldn't say that out loud, and then sometimes I do. And then the problem is I can't remember whether I did or didn't. Um, the whole Mod Hub situation at the moment 
giants are releasing mods into the mod hub but they're not new mods they're mods or they're vehicles that were in FS17 so they're kind of filling up the mod hub with things that we've already had before anyway and to my mind some of them shouldn't they just have been in the base game anyway I mean I don't know I think you know, it's obviously been done because they want to get some mods into the mod hub you know soon after release but I don't know it just seems to be using up a lot of not that it makes no, it makes no difference how many mods are in the mod hub you don't have to actually download them if you don't want them but um, yeah I just I was hoping for something new something a bit different from them you know a surprise in the first week of release you know you get a mod pop up and then whoa that's amazing no one knew that was coming kind of thing but anyway just me so next contract might be another harvesting one might be a contract a uh, contract one uh, could be transport could be could be anything that's not the right menu this is the right menu transporting we've got another transporting job there harvesting ah oh, there we go so we've got a couple of fertilizing jobs now uh, contract fertilizing field four that's going to be a big field isn't it because they're offering 14,000 but if you lease their equipment you lose four which takes me down to that's a big lot that's a load of money to lose when you consider that you've got to buy your own fertilizer to do that job why is it some of the other contracts like that one <laughs> you're using a harvester oh cotton harvester i might do that one yeah we'll see if that will glitch actually we'll do that we'll give that a go um yeah that one you've got a cotton harvester a tractor and a cotton bale trailer and you're reduction in that is $312 this one you're really you're leasing a tractor and a fertilizer spreader and you're going to take a hit of four grand on that it seems to me what they're, they're taking off you is equitable to the payout not the equipment you're leasing that just seems a bit weird so I think let's cotton harvest I haven't used this in anger yet so lease items will take a bit of a hit but you know what it's not this one's not about making money this is about using the equipment i'm just gassed oh look at it ah oh, the module 635 i haven't even used this like tested it out or anything yet i've just had another john deere we seem to be getting a lot of those and the module 4 and that's what i was saying the module 4 because it has that tip thing and it can come down you can actually use it as a little loader like a low loader which was what was used on the, the picture I was sent in editing the person that sent me that picture that's going to come up on the screen because they deserve a shout out so you know right let's go let's fire up this beast that's not as loud as I thought it was going to be Now, in my excitement, I forgot what field it was. <laughs> field 14. That's where we're heading. Where is field 14 in relation to us? Oh, it's right there. Next to the animal dealer. So, just up the main road again. Turn right in front of the animal dealer's ship, cross the tracks, and... There. Let's do this. Nice cab. Big vehicle. Watch out for trains. They can be a nuisance. A blessing and a curse. Now earlier on today, I put up a guide to trains. Um, again, you know what? It's one of those weird things that when I do my guide to videos, I used to put them up because it was like, if it's something I wanted to know about, or I wasn't sure about, then there must be other people out there that don't know how to do it. So I'll stick up a guide to. And it was always like, my guide to videos always did pretty well. People, lots of people were watching. I've had a few people comment and say, well, could you do a guide to on this? Or, you know, and it literally might only be two or three people. But if two or three people have asked, you then think there must be more. Um, having worked in teaching, it's always the question that's not asked, you know? So when you, when you do something and then half the class go, oh yeah, I didn't know that but they're too scared to ask, you know? I'm not saying people are scared to ask, but it's that same principle. Um, to be honest, if I do a guide to, 
and hardly anyone watches it, I don't care. As long as the people that need to watch it, the people that want to watch it, that want to find out watch it, that's all that matters really, isn't it? At the end of the day. So, oh, why is it every time I think of cotton harvesting? There was a song in the UK called Cotton Eye Joe, quite a while ago now. Um, that just keeps popping into my head. Oh dear. The wonderful, wacky, weird world of Mr. CDP in his mind. See, this is, I must admit, there are a lot of, um, a lot of signs. Um, Alien Jim did message me to say, I'm, he has to come out and repair them. <laughs> That's his task, apparently, on Farming Simulator 19 on here, is he comes and fixes all the signposts I knock down. So if I knock down a signpost, I've got to pay Alien Jim to come and repair them. So I've got to try and avoid knocking them down, if it's all possible now. Right, um, there seems to be a lot of bushes here, so let's try and avoid charging through the undergrowth. Now, I haven't even opened this up yet, so I'm assuming it's uh, L1 and X. Oh, yes. Oh, will you look at that? That is just... I love having new machinery. It's when new mods come out and the fact this is a new bit of kit, and I, I guess a lot of you guys have probably already used them and, you, you know, you're... You know, you've already done it, but I'm... I'm oh, just enjoying myself. Right, turn it on. That's dropped down. See if I can get that into a row. Kind of in a row. Let's get cruise control on. I'm still really enjoying, and it, it, again, it's another one of those tiny little features. And I hope we don't get to that point where we become blasé about it, you know? And it, well, we will do, because we did with FS17, we will with 19. A lot of the new features which are new, things like the crops bending and springing up behind the vehicles, and we'll get to a point where, well, yeah, that's just normal. That's FS19, isn't it? But then you've got to look back at a time when it wasn't there, and you think, it, it's a really cool feature, it's nice. I like that a lot. Turning these around without. Now, that was the other thing that I've noticed. Um, when I was doing work on contracts, when you have crop destruction on, because I thought, well, hang on, I've got crop destruction on. I'm not doing any damage anywhere. That seems a bit weird to me. Um, and what's happened now is that if you're working, because of this new system of buying parcels of land, if you don't own that land, you can't work on it. If you don't own that land, you can't do any destruction on it either. So even when you're doing contracts, it's treating you like an AI worker. So if you turn around in the grass at the end, if you turn around over someone else's crop, you don't actually do any damage to it because you don't own that bit of land. That's a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing in that on something like multiplayer, you can't just go charging across other people's land and destroy everything and flatten their grass and all, you know. Which I totally understand that. That makes absolutely perfect sense because that just would not be fair. Um, but then having crop destruction on but not having that, it, it just seems a bit... When you're playing single player, if you're going for that realism thing, that kind of gets... It's not one step forward, two steps back, you know. I, uh, again, just putting it on. Just talking out loud. I didn't turn as wide as I thought I had then. I thought I'll leave myself an entire strip. Um, someone asked me the other day why I was harvesting um, in strips. Rather than going up and down right next to each other, I was leaving a gap, doing one, leaving a gap, doing one. Um, th that really just came from one, um, just to entertain myself. Because when you're doing harvesting on larger fields, it can sometimes get a bit boring. But in watching the Millennial Farmer... Um, when he was working with GPS and he's been doing tillage and when they were doing harvesting what he they put in different varieties of crops so if they might they might be doing a corn crop um, but they might have in one field five different varieties of corn and they'll be testing them out to see which yields the best for the following year so when they order their seed for the following year they'll go for ones that are going to give them a higher yield so when they set their GPS when they're seeding and planting it logs where they are then when they come back to harvest they use the GPS to harvest them in individual kind of strips so to speak 
So I, I just kind of watched him doing that, and that's when I kind of thought the other day, I thought, I'll, I'll do that, I'll just do it in strips. I do it sometimes with ploughing, and on FS17 I did it with fertilising. Not, not so much fertilising, to be fair, but things like ploughing, cultivating, and sometimes it really is just to break the monotony of what you're doing, you know. Actually, that will turn around fairly tight, won't it? So to be fair, I can, and often I, I'll do it because I'll just use the turning circle of the vehicle. That way you haven't got to go forward and backward and forward and backward at the end of every run. Um, I just find it makes life a bit easier, you know. Um, but this has got a really tight turning circle, so you can actually turn around at the end of the field and get right back onto the next row straight away. Plus it leaves another lovely patterns on the field. And, yeah. I'm feeling much happier today. I, <laughs> it's like, you guys, you guys are great. I just, you know, it's nice nice when people say nice things you know people need to be nicer to each other I don't know why people insist on being horrible what's the point life's too short to be horrible to people be the best you that you can be I'm smiling like an idiot here I really am after watching all the <laughs> all the videos, the pre-release videos when they announced it was going to be cotton and all that kind of stuff And is that squeezing up the, the cotton inside? every now and again that keeps moving assuming as it's harvesting it's kind of compacting inside isn't it? Um, yeah, that watching all the videos and yeah, that really does turn tight doesn't it? I like that I think it's really cool and I like the fact that um, there you go, there's that squeak again, I think it just drove over a mouse um, that now I'm actually in the harvester the ones you saw the initial E3 trailer and there were like five of them charging across the field and it's brilliant yeah it's mice I'm sure it is keep an ear out for it what is that what I was doing I, love, I didn't even notice that didn't even notice it the cotton inside as I'm going forward look flying across the top it's coming up through the uh, the collection header. <laughs> Why did I forget the word for that? Up those pipes, up to the top, blows it across the top, and then down into the chamber below. So as I move forward, you can see it there. Look, look at that. Didn't even notice that detail. So that goes down. Oh, so that pushes it all down to the bottom, which compacts it which makes the bale and then it um, it comes back up to the top allows the next lot to flow and then it's uh, it's very exciting but we are harvesting how oh, cool nice to get to a point <laughs> When I get to episode 300 and something on this Let's Play, and I've got enough money to buy one of these, um, it'd be really cool to own my own cotton harvester. I can be the first kid on my road to own a cotton harvester. I think I'm going to get this whole field harvested, aren't I, without having to unload. That's weird though, if I haven't got a full bale, how can I unload? Because I'm not even really close to a full bale on this field, surely. I'm not sure what's happening now. I should, um, yeah, I'm not going to get, this is not going to fill up. So how am I going to unload this onto that bale trailer without having, without having a full bale?
So a couple of things have happened. Uh, one, I've just got to test out the uh, save function. I don't mean save function as in I know how to save a game. But partway through a contract, that's that fantastic new addition to um, FS19 is that if you are partway through a contract, you can pause it, you can stop the game, you can save the game, come out the game, come back in again. Had to pop off, take the dog to the vets for his yearly jabs and I got the time completely mixed up. So um, I had to stop it, was off and do that. That works perfectly. Um, I'm still now a bit concerned and puzzled over this whole, because I, as far as I was aware, I thought a bail on one of these was um, like 20,000 litres or something. So like I said, I'm, I don't think we're going to come close. It's weird, why is that not? Is it half so or not? Yeah, we are going up. Wasn't sure. Yeah, so uh, I'm a bit worried now. But it'll be interesting to see. This will, this, you know, it'll either work really well, um, better than I expected, or it will highlight one of the things people have been mentioning <coughs> that whilst the contracting system is, is in place and it's has had a lot of overhauls, there are still issues. It's, it's not quite as clear cut as it seems to be. Um, and I think I put that in oh, all the bushes in one of my comments. I think. Um, someone left on my last video about a few issues they've been having with various different things that they have made massive strides forward in certain areas but oddly seem to have gone backwards in other ones it, you know they seem to have forgotten certain things apparently I haven't even checked this yet I'm gonna have a look I think it was Hillbilly oh, oh what was the name sorry um, commented to say about the conveyor belt situation if you look in conveyor belts, there's no pickup conveyor anymore. Now I haven't tested the conveyor belts, so it's possible, I don't know if it's definite, that the Grimmy Quantum maybe, will that now pick up from the ground like the field trigger ones did, um, or not? Because if it doesn't, then what's the point of having a conveyor belt system where you haven't got a pickup one? Unless they're just assuming now that from now on, rather than have a pickup conveyor, you've got to load onto the conveyor belts, with a bucket maybe I don't know that's something to have a look at um, I might have to have a fill around so we'll have to do maybe look at conveyor belts and there's so many different things to be looking at there's um, and it is test time at the end of the day we're looking at all these different things that have changed and it's testing out how they interact with all the new things that we know in FS19 we are of course comparing them to 17 because that's our benchmark that's our yardstick if you like um, and there are some great moves forward but some really do seem to have gone backwards so they've looked at the systems and decided that well, all this all needs an overhaul whether they've just overhauled things I wouldn't say for the sake of it but you, you get my drift you know so let's hop out of here now I'm confused so I need to go and pick up the uh, the trailer that it provides you with on this contract but I'm not entirely sure now. Let's open up this menu. Put the help menu on. Unload unfinished. Oh, an unfinished bail. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. Let's un unload an unfinished bail then. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Look at that. So it puts it out as the full bail shape and size. But it's not full it's not a complete bale I didn't know you could do that okay well that's made a massive difference then that does look super cool okay farm dog loves it absolutely loves it <laughs> right close back no floating bale or anything as yet we are soon to see and let's fold the harvester I enjoyed that, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, let's turn this off. Let's look at contract progress. 80%. Cool. So, we've got my John Deere. I've got the module 4. 4 module. The 4 module trailer. I'm considering getting one of these, you know. Using it as a little mini 
low loader. I know it's designed for cotton bales, but you know. Let's see if we can get any of that seat suspension as we go over the railway tracks. Yeah, it looks really going up. Oh, no. Didn't bump as much as I thought it would. Exciting times. Let's see. I've done this before. So what we should be able to do now then is we we'll line it up properly. Stop there. Operating position. So we go to operating position. It does that. And what we should be able to do now is back up to the bale. Oh, it doesn't like that at all, does it? Okay. Let's um, put it back into transport position. And then what we need to do is get it right up to the bale first because once that's in operating position, that does not like being moved at all. That's really not turning particularly well, is it? Okay. Let's try now, right up against it. So, operating position. Oh, it does it automatically. And there we go, we are loading a bale. My first cotton bale of FS19. Transport position. Does it have straps? Oh, no. That's unusual. Do you think it might have a strap or something that goes over it? Or is it just so heavy that it just stays in there? Anyway, right, so, where are we going to? Spinnery. Think, think, think. I think I might be able to get to it down here. So the fact you can unload an unfinished bale, cool. Um, that joins me back up to the road I just came along, I think. Let's follow this down. The clanking of Christmas pudding production continues. Unfortunately, my oldest daughter seems to keep breaking, breaking out into song as well and forgetting that I'm recording, but yeah. I can forgive her that, she's excited. So, our field is down there, and this is our farm. It's not really a farm at the moment, we've got a field. It's that way, which means the spinnery should be this way. Be another contract complete. I've decided, you know what, I am going to get a fertiliser sprayer. I'm going to treat it, it's an investment. We've got 129,000. The whole point is, you know, it's not, we're not just throwing money away, we will own that piece of equipment. So we're investing in Mr. CDP's farming services. That's the whole point, isn't it? So I can then do more jobs, more contracts without leasing. And please tell me that's open yet. I thought the gates were shut for a minute then. Just the angle I was coming at. It's a bit weird. Well, I haven't had a problem with the floating bale yet then. Or tractors disappearing or anything. But I've only just done a very small field, to be fair. So now what we need to do is unload bale. Contract on field 14 is complete. So what I can do is drive all this back if I want to. I don't need to. Um, for realism's sake I can. If I just click square now to complete that contract I'll get paid 859 because there were the lease costs. Um, which, you know, uh, to be find it fair, it, that one wasn't about the money. I just enjoyed it. <laughs> Just enjoyed using that. Uh, we've got another transporting job there. Harvest, another transporting job there. Fertilising. I'm going to get the fertiliser and have a go at one of these, I think. Try and save myself a bit of money. Um, yeah. Might do that one. I mean, 10 grand is not to be sniffed at, is it? But I don't know how many times I'm going to have to refill the, the, uh, the sprayer. But let's get this back. And we'll take on another one. And once that's complete, we can be paid off and we can be happy. Yeah, so no glitches. I didn't experience anything untoward. Nothing that I thought I would. I really probably shouldn't be coming on this track, you know. 
Is that the map open? I don't know where it comes out. Uh, on a road. I think I've just hit someone's mailbox. I didn't knock it down, Jim. So you haven't got to repair it. It's just still there. Still in one piece. Well, say one piece. Might be a bit bent and broken, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's just drive along inside the cab of this. John Deere. So nice to be driving a John Deere, not an O Deere. Um, the Veltra ripoff that we had to get away with. Oh dear, nearly there. So what will happen then is the uh, the store workers will go out and collect the cotton harvest so they'll bring that back. Oh, that is a real big bump there. That needs to be more, a better drop curb than that, I think. So, job done. Let's get our payments. Contract. Let's go up. Complete. And it's gone up a little bit. We're back up to 130. I had gone down to 129,000 because I bought a... Um, what did I buy? chainsaw was the word I was looking for yeah I bought a chainsaw so let's you know what let's do it let's take the plunge I'm gonna get under crop protection I'm gonna get the mega 35 uh, the mega 2200 for 35,000 I'm gonna buy that no <sighs> why did I press lease and not buy Right, let's buy that one. And I'm going to buy the front tank as well, I think. There's not a... There's not a hardy one, is there? Don't think so. I don't want to... Hmm, what could I do? Let's have a look under... Brands. I don't think there's a hardy one. Uh, let's have a look. Hardy. No. Okay. So we'll get that one for 8,000. Buy this time, not lease. Thank you. <laughs> the question is now... Oh, it doesn't matter actually which one the lease one is. If I press garage and I press square for leased items, it'll put that one back. Return. I've just lost money. <sighs> Never mind. 84,000. I'm going to, need to put fertilizer in this. Combined, it's going to come at 3,700. So if I buy two, and at the end of the day, that's mine now. So that means I can leave it in there and it belongs to me. So I could use it for other contracts. That's assuming, of course, I don't use it all. So this is going to cost me money now to do the next contract, but it's kind of an investment in the future of the company, I think. 2,400. Whoa. Another one. We're just hemorrhaging cash at the moment. Okay then. So, next thing I think I need to do, if we're doing a fertilising job, I need to put some narrows on this. So let's disconnect... What one am I on? The trailer. The good thing about this is once you've done it... Um, disconnect that. So that spray is now mine. You know, next time we've got a spraying job, there won't be this initial outlay. There will, of course, be the fertilizer that we're going to need. And if we're going to do herbicide, we can unload, put it back into a container, and then put herbicide in. So it gives us options for fertilizing now and weed protection if we need it. Turn it off. Why have I still got that open? So customize we want will set up we want narrows and what's that going to cost nothing 
fantastic. Doesn't look as pretty with the with narrows on, but never mind. So it's been nice using a different sprayer setup, I think. Something a bit different, I haven't used before. I can actually hook up to it, it'll be even better, wouldn't it? Got to get used to that steering, it's completely different. It's not that sudden snap snap backwards forwards. Let's get the coon tank on the front as well. Oops. And let's fill up. So I mean though, if you look up in the top left hand corner now, like on that here, it's almost impossible to see that tractor icon. So if I flick between front uh, front piece of machinery, rear piece of machinery, I can't tell. It's not that brilliant. Um, so I want it on rear. Let's put some into here, because there should be 500 litres left. And that one. I do love as well. When you're filling things up, I don't know if it's like mimicking the PTO running, using more revs, more strain on the engine, but the, you'll hear it go up. Might be better off outside because I don't know if we can see from here. Let's zoom right in. Hang on. Let's get close up. Let's fill up. Cool. So this tank's still got 300 litres in it. If I was to return that 300 litres, I'd get paid for the whole tank. That might save me a bit of money. Right, so what I need to do then is take on that contract, don't I? Because I've got the stuff to do it now. I just haven't actually accepted the contract. So we're going to do field four, fertilising. Fingers crossed. I uh, don't want to lease items. I'm just going to accept the contract as is. That's now our active contract on field four. I believe that's a bit further over. Up. Uh, oh yeah, that is a big field, isn't it? <laughs> that is rather large. So, beacons on. I know a couple of people did comment about the, the sound the engines make now and the fact you don't get that instant acceleration that you used to get. This is a bit more realistic. I know I'm, I'm not a farmer, but I did do that tractor driving experience um, way back last year, wasn't it? Um, October of last year. And um, you, this is it does sound like this. It's not that instant. Boom, you just don't just go. Sometimes it sounds like on a normal car, like you've got a slipping clutch, like you're over revving in the gear. But they do often sound like that. That's, you know, I don't know. Those silver wheels. <laughs> They're far more pronounced when you've got the narrows on. Don't really want to overtake carrying all this weight, but it's going very slowly. That's a cool looking bit of kit. Hardy Mega. So what I may well do is uh, I might have to start this job and then finish the episode because I'm not going to get the whole contract done I think in the time I've got left. So we have done cotton harvesting, we did sell that, we made a bit of money. We have invested in some more machinery for our uh, our fledgling company. Oh, that was what I meant to say. Oh, I must have forget that. I said on the first episode that um, Miss CDP's Farming Services was started on Lone Oak Farm. No, it wasn't. It was started on Mercury Farms. That's where the idea came about because I was doing all the transport and haulage jobs. Um, it started there, not on Lone Oak. So I apologise, uh, Jim. It was, yeah, you're absolutely correct. It was on Mercury Farms that the uh, 
the company was established. Uh, beacon's off. Let's make sure I'm on the rear one. I am. Let's open this out. Have we not used this before? I'm curious to see how this operates. It's quite a wide, wide boom width. I quite like that. Okay, well, I've actually parked up almost perfectly then. Now, will this go up and down as well? It will. Oh, I like that. Very cool. That can be quite low to the ground, to be fair, because this isn't too bad. Okay, then, so let's turn this on. Let's get the uh, cruise control on and get it cracking. I'm quite scared how much it's going to use of this. It doesn't use too much. I can either return what I don't use um, or keep it to be used for other fertilising jobs if I want to, which would make sense. The good thing about this now, because at least I'll get the full 14,000, although I have spent, what did I spend, 4,000, is it 4,800 already on, yeah, fertiliser. So we'll see. It doesn't seem to be going down too quickly, but it is a fair size field. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue. Um, I will see you on the next episode. Um, what I will do at the start of the next episode, there'll be a time lapse of me finishing this off. And we'll see how we do financially. I think I'll probably start with that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, like I said, this is it's a bit of a slow burn because of the way we're going to be doing this. The Naked Farmer. Um, it is going to be, you know, take our time, use loads of different bits of equipment, do loads of leasing and contracting jobs. Then once we start to earn bits of money, we'll gradually increase the bits of equipment we've got. And we'll go from there really that's that's the plan um if you have enjoyed it give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>